Hi, my name's Jordan, I'm 20, 20 years old. Uh, you know, I met Jordan first doing therapy. Um, Jordan walked into my office and I just remember seeing this just kid just full of energy, just a ton of energy, he went into the office and first I thought, what did I get myself into? How am I going to be able to maintain this level of energy? But, but you learned very quickly with Jordan that it was very easy to maintain and just you fall in love with it quickly. So Jordan had experienced a lot more than youth his age at his age. I probably met him at age 10 um, and what he's gone through was a lot and it, it was traumatizing, it was difficult to watch and, and deal with and process with him um, and it led to a lot of behaviors at home. He was aggressive at home, he would destroy property, he was breaking windows, he get aggressive toward parents, toward his sister at times. Uh, there was this one time that I kind of ticked my mom off. I wanted to go with uh, her and my sister, and um, she didn't want me to go because her and I were uh, not getting along at that time. She wanted me to get out, so I got out, and I wasn't too happy about it, so I kicked the window and busted the window. So when Jordan would walk in to the crisis resolution program, needing a break from home and just trying to recenter and kind of hit that reset button, uh, he would come in and he would drop his bags and was just like, hi family, I'm home. And he would literally say that. He'd walk in and be like, hey guys. And he would refer to us as mom, dad, brother, sister in a joking way, but you could see the staff just light up every time he walked through that door. My relationship with Joan went really, really well. He was one of those that uh, always gave 100%. He always showed up. When he went to his house, he always came through the door. When you pick him up from school, he always came. He was always one of those that always would participate. And that's what really um, allows for success is a repetition of seeing and hearing and doing over and over and over and over and over again. He was always in a good mood. Uh, when he came into off the therapy, he was always just in the office and he was just excited to see people. He was excited to see me, he was excited to see whoever he worked with, whether it was Tyler or Crisis folks. Um, he was excited because he knew we were gonna do something fun. Um, Non-traditional therapy in the sense of, we're gonna go fishing, we're gonna go for a hike, we're gonna go play hoop, shoot hoops in the gym, we're gonna go play pig, we're gonna do something while we talk and process these things. It was like a light switch. Um, you know, you could see him in, in therapy getting admitted to crisis and just being sad and depressed and crying and having a hard time and holding that anger in. And then he'd walk in with just this emotional release of just joy. They just cared about me. They, um, they said they cared about me. They, they understood like what I was going through and uh, just been through, been there for me since day one since I first started going there. You know, when Jordan first started coming to CRP, um, there were holes in the wall frequently. Uh, I, I can remember a time where he got upset with a chair and just like charged it into a wall. And, and for, for months we had this beautiful four corner holes in the wall from that we called Jordan's Corner. <laughs> and he lovingly referred to it as that too. But there were outbursts. He would get mad, he would scream, he would yell, he would, he'd be upset. But the difference was he knew it was a safe place to do it. So having that outlet and that safety net of CRP allows somebody who is at risk to go somewhere, cool off, and then come back and then try to re-engage. I like to say that you know treatment is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And the people at CRP are like the people who are holding the bottles of water and supporting you every mile of the way. And so when you have that sort of structure, that sort of dynamic, it can really, really flourish if given the chance. The biggest thing we did to get Jordan engaged in the crisis resolution program was to work off his strengths. And we learned very quickly that Jordan was a very active kid, he was an athletic kid, and he didn't get these opportunities to do at home very often. A lot of times, because his behaviors were just so severe, he didn't get those opportunities at home. So we would take him to the gym, and we would take him fishing, and we'd take him hiking, and it would be one-on-one -on -one or be in a group, it didn't matter. He would start to open up. You go in. <laughs> there it is. Without CRP, John would certainly be in a different place. I think that um, he would have got there eventually, but many more years down the road. He would have had many more crises in his life. Likely he would have had much more interaction by law enforcement, because he was heading down paths that are difficult to come back from. I think without the crisis resolution program, Jordan would be well behind where he is today. Um, I don't know that he would be as independent as he was. I think he would probably still be in services daily, um, probably in adult services and crisis centers with adults because he hadn't had that chance to process and, and, and really 
figure out how to use his energy and his emotions in a more positive way. Um, I'm better at um, controlling my anger, um, my thoughts, and how I act. Uh, the sky's the limit for Jordan. Um, he is such a lovable kid. Um, adult, I guess you could say now, um, but he's got such a good personality. Um, people like being around him. People like seeing him. He's just this kid who has so much potential. We were able to have like a really successful closure. And one of the best clients that I think I've had. I would tell the people that helped me, uh, thank you, everything that you've done. I would not be here without, if it wasn't for your family service and crisis.